Hi, I'm Fraser Douglas, the avid tent camper. In this video, I want to describe some basic facts and observations about the East Wing Sportsman Axe. The East Wing Manufacturing Company was founded by Ernest O. East Wing in Rockford, Illinois back in 1923. From the early days, his company made good quality hammers, axes, and other striking tools with steel handles and leather washer grips. Today, East Wing makes at least eight different small axes. Since a few websites have confused these axes, I want to clearly identify the model that I tested and the names of similar axes. This video evaluates the traditional E24A 14-inch sportsman axe with a leather washer grip. Eastwing also makes a nearly identical 12-inch sportsman axe with a leather washer grip, a 14-inch special edition sportsman's axe with a leather washer grip and a blackened head, a 14-inch camper's axe with either a black, blue, or orange nylon grip, a 16-inch camper's axe with a nylon grip, a 14 and a quarter hunter's axe with a nylon grip, and a 14-inch fireside friend splitting tool with a nylon grip. Although several websites and YouTube videos have already posted reviews of the Sportsman Axe, these websites and videos typically compared it with a much more expensive Gransfors Brook wildlife hatchet instead of a similarly priced Husqvarna curved handle hatchet or council one and a quarter pound hatchet. As you might guess, the $35 Sportsman's Axe was frequently judged to be inferior to the $150 wildlife hatchet. Furthermore, these websites and videos did not test the axe for performing typical tent camping chores. So let me re-emphasize the fact that modern tent campers will not need a razor-sharp hatchet to cut standing trees, de-limb fallen trees, buck trees into logs, or split large tree rounds. Instead, they will need a hatchet to split uh, pieces of firewood into small pieces of kindling and stove wood, and occasionally make other camp implements such as batons, wedges, walking sticks, or spare hatchet handles. So now let me summarize my observations and impressions of this East Wing 14-inch sportsman's axe as a tool for modern tent camping chores. I did not buy this axe. It was loaned to me by a subscriber, Tim Douglas. But the retail prices of this axe ranges on the web from $28 to $49. Home Depot, for example, lists them for $34.97. The fit and finish of this tool is nice. The most notable feature of this axe is the steel handle rather than a traditional hickory handle. In fact, the head and the handle are constructed as a single piece of hardened steel with a lacquered leather washer grip. Since the head is hardened, the pole could be used to drive in metal tent pegs. The axe has smooth and attractive lines and is comfortable to hold. The head does not have an eye and is much thinner than other small axes, especially where the eye is normally located. The leather washer grip felt comfortable at first, but as I discovered later, the large metal end washer on the pommel quickly rubbed a hot spot on the heel of my hand. Before shipping it to me, Tim put an exceptionally sharp edge on the axe so that it was much sharper than axes that you would buy in a retail store. This axe is advertised as having a 14 inch handle, but actual measurement reveals that it is only 13 inches long. This length allows excellent control needed for splitting kindling, but is still long enough to facilitate sufficient force to split large pieces of firewood. The handle is a steel shaft with a leather washer grip. The washers are secured in place with a steel end cap. 
Because the neck is steel rather than wood, users do not have to be concerned about overstrike damage. In fact, they can use the flattened steel neck to continue splitting wood if the piece of wood slides down to the neck area. As a general rule, rectangular shaped heads are best suited for splitting tasks. The East Wing's head is a semi-rectangular shape, but as you can see, it is smaller than the Council and the Husqvarna heads. The weight of the head is difficult to determine, but the total weight of the axe is 1 pound 13 ounces. Assuming that the handle accounts for about half of that weight, you could estimate that the head weighs only about three quarters of a pound. Personally, I prefer a heavier head because heavier heads require less exerted force, use gravity to split firewood, and absorb much of the shock from each strike. Head geometry is a primary factor that determines how a particular axe will behave in various wood splitting and chopping tasks. An analysis of head geometry should examine two related features, curvature or lack thereof along the center line and curvature along the perpendicular line. When the perpendicular line has a convex curvature, we say that the head has tapered or thinned cheeks. Like most other camp axes, the sportsman axe has a concave centerline curvature, but this curvature is pronounced and extends from the bit all the way back to the pole. Personally, I think this curvature helps when splitting small pieces of firewood. Across the perpendicular line, the sportsman axe has an almost flat surface, which I consider to be perhaps its most desirable feature in terms of splitting small pieces of firewood and kindling. The East Wing website does not give a Rockwell hardness value, but several weeks ago when I began researching this axe model, I found a website that cited a Rockwell hardness value of 55. Since it had been sharpened before I received it, I can't comment on how it reacted to the file, but it definitely held a sharp edge. Although the head of this axe is much thinner than the heads of similar priced camp axes, the bit is about the same thickness. Camp axes need a sheath to protect the bit, to protect other camping gear, and to protect the user from injury. Older models of this axe came with a nice leather sheath, but now they come with a nylon Cordura sheath. After examining the axis features, I used it to split several pieces of firewood. First, I split large pieces of firewood into smaller pieces. For example, this piece of red oak is 19 inches long, 5 inches wide, and 3 inches thick. To be safe, I strike it just hard enough to sink the axe into the wood. A stronger chop might have split the piece completely, but could have made the hatchet fly in an unintended direction and cause personal injury. After starting the split at the end of the piece, I would ordinarily remove the wooden handle axe and use a wedge to complete the split. But since this axe has a hardened pole, I'll just drive it through the log. And so what I'll do to split this piece of wood is turn it upside down and drop it on the pole. To split stove wood and kindling, I'm going to put my axe directly where I want it to split. I'm going to pick the wood and the axe up together. and split small pieces. Let me do that again. And again.
since the axe has the flat perpendicular surface, it makes it very easy to split kindling and stove wood. Sometimes the wood slides down toward the neck. But I don't have to take it out. I can just continue to split it all the way through. My final test was to use the axe to chop chips from a piece of firewood as if I were making a wooden implement. In sum, this East Wing Sportsman's Axe is a good choice for modern tent camping families who are looking for a camp axe priced under $50. It is made in the USA, is available in many local department and hardware stores, comes with a nice sheath, fits into a standard size tool bag, splits large pieces of firewood reasonably well, and splits kindling better than any other axe priced under $50. If you sharpen the edge before using it, you'll be able to shape wood and make a variety of wooden implements. My primary criticism of this axe, and it's a small one, is that it is not as comfortable as other axes when splitting firewood for several minutes. My hand and forearm quickly tired. I believe that this discomfort was primarily caused by the lightweight head, which was not stout enough to absorb the shock of repeated strikes but the handle design could have played a role also. When I used the axe without a glove, the metal end cap quickly rubbed a hot spot on the heel of my hand. Well, I hope you've learned a little bit more about the East Wing Sportsman's Axe and about camp hatchets in general. For more information about camp axes, Please read my book, Basic Tent Camping. Visit my website, www.basictentcamping.com, and visit my Facebook page, Modern Tent Camping. Remember, take more trips, travel further, visit more attractions, and save money. Go tent camping. <laughs>